YouTubers, is another video from me here, Evelyn. Today we're going to be looking at episode two and three of Anne Rice's Interview with the Vampire series produced by AMC. So episode three and four, they're really establishing what's gonna be the finale of this season. We'll get into that. So episode three explores Claudia and Louis filing in Paris, analyzing the current state of the situation within the city in France. Claudia and Louis are up on one of the big statues high high up, up in a way and Claudia is talking about her frustrations that the people that she's pickpocketing from you know monetary wise they barely have nothing Louis is telling Claudia that what do you expect this is shortly after the war but there is some hope you can't expect to live a life of luxury when they're having constant blackouts the sort shortages even Louis explains the reading in the newspaper that there is not enough plaster to put cast in people that have their bones their bones are really fragile because they haven't had that much uh, substance or nourishment now the other bit we get is now Omar is in the interview he explains to Daniel to the narration that him and his coven had been surveillancing Claudia and Louis for about five months because they don't understand how these vampires didn't know the rules about the vampire world in which of course Lestat never told them and we get right into bits of the book that's coming in and let me repeat again the show writers they took the source material and they made it make sense for this contemporary period the interesting part of the ep of this particular episode three is Daniel being put in his place psychologically because Daniel is a very clever sharp sarcastic he's you know that golden gem there of pulling us back to a sense of reality because the it starts with the first part where Daniel interrupts Louis recounting how <coughs> how Claudia and him were talking in a cafe and we see that at this stage of Louis' vampiric life, he's obsessed with taking pictures of people or trying to capture the moment. And Claudia is just basically telling Louis, okay, apart from all of this, who are you apart from me or this, that? We get an interruption from Daniel saying that Paris sucks, X, Y, and Z. And Omar says that we've triggered the memory within him that, that Daniel's remembering when he was with his wife at the time, or fiance, or whatever, tried to propose to her, but she never, ag never agreed. Now, I'm going to skip forward to the main important part of the episode three that Louis wants to confirm whether is that is that because he's carrying around him like a hallucination being his conscience in a weird way he goes to an accountant which with the conversation the accountant knew that Lestat is a vampire because he tells Louis I know who you are and Lestat hasn't got in contact with us for some while he could either be dead or sleeping so we know the accountant knows he goes and leaves a letter to he leaves the box to Louis or Louis opens it and there's a letter addressed to him written by Lestat saying that if you read this letter that means I'm dead don't go after the people that killed me don't give them the satisfaction and Louis is currently feeling really guilty in that moment and we get a beautiful scene of dream stat now the hair looks straightened too much okay besides the point it was like they put on an extra extensions or whatever episode four gives a better look of his hair because each time we see different kind of versions of dream stat and after when louis reads out or well, narrates the message of the letter um what you might call it daniel cuts in making more sa snide sarcastic remarks and we can clearly see louis like in some sort of torment and Armand picks up on that episode three to four i feel slightly a bit more sympathetic towards Armand. i don't think he has that much of a sinister plan or i don't know so Louis gets triggered and he starts digging harder in Daniel's mind, his memory, almost making him break because of course Daniel is an ex heroin addict. Well, of course, he's an ex addict, so he has a lot of the behaviors that exhibit that kind of defense mechanisms that people of a certain type may have. So Louis starts digging into Daniel's failed relationship and Daniel is clearly shaken. Of course he has Parkinson's on the top of that so he's trying to keep himself from like spazzing out more and Armour kind of sense this is going off the rails and he tells Louis maybe we shouldn't have not done that. Now in the midst of that Daniel gets a flashback of 
the interview part 1972 on March staring at him like reading his mind in that point so you know in that brief moment I'll put it up here of Amar telling Daniel on that time oh you stole your dad's playboy magazines and whatnot and then Daniel was even more like what the hell is going on now something happened after that interview we know now that in the episode three Daniel is what laughs at the fact what a coincidence they tried to move away from their style and they go and um, they meet all the vampires the theater of the vampires to me you know maybe some people might say oh, sacrilege how can the theater the uh, like the Santiago character whatnot how can you not like them well when I read the book my experience they were incoincidental these characters the main bit was Louis Lestat and Claudia their relationship and how I came back to it and uh, Daniel clearly says, come on, this is sounds like a telenovela. So he's at the side of it, we can see this episode he's been put in his place. And the part which I want to describe when Louis is dissecting Daniel's life and memories, we see the glamour, the facade of being a vampire go down and we see the predator. And that episode, wow, it's like it got dark in that minute in that moment we should never forget despite how elegant they may present themselves they're still creatures of the night of course we'll get into the scene that Amar does eventually meet Louis he's had enough he goes into the park the gay park in Paris and they meet each other and then Amar invites Claudia and Louis to see the show and then we see the pretense and then we see the connection between the book and the series now it's I almost feel like I'm reading the book when I see each episode, that everything just makes sense. And the ending part of episode 3 is basically the murder mansion scene where they all go together including um, Louis and Claudia and all the other vampires to kill a load of people in the match and we get that. Now I want to really move on to episode 4, the beginning of episode 4 left my jaw dropped, I was like this is going into my theory. So at the beginning of episode four, we see Daniel having a lunch in the restaurant in the same building. They, we know they're in Dubai and all of the scenes has been either Daniel stuck in the in the first floor, the pension, the penthouse suite that they're living in. But this time we see Daniel in a different setting in the daytime. And he's there eating in the restaurant with the Japanese cuisine and the, he makes another snide remark seeing his fish, his head moving and he tells the chef in so many words to cut off the head. Then all of a sudden the guy sitting right, well, three chairs next to him says, oh, you're Daniel Malloy. And he starts saying, oh, I've read your books. Daniel doesn't buy it. The thing about Daniel is really sharp. Some power of him, he always cuts through the BS, let's say, but sometimes too much to the point. And they start having conversations and then this guy clearly knows who Daniel is. He clearly knows his purpose or what he's doing here. And Daniel says, well, are you CIA, MI5? And he starts saying, oh, you're not the only one you, they've tried this with. They've killed X, Y, and Z. I was like, and then afterwards, Daniel goes and says out loud, oh, this guy's a spy, da, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And then the guy makes this other remark saying that they separated you away from your laptop, isn't it? And another thing's that, oh, they bugged your laptop, so many other things, but Daniel goes off. And during the episode, when Daniel's interviewing, like, First, Armand, because Louis is still asleep, Armand recounts the story of how he met Lestat in France. Now, that is the time period of book one of Interview the Vampire, that 19th century, like, don't, don't, don't hold me to, you know, before the electricity and all that kind of stuff. We see Lestat be showing the origins of the theatre of the vampires, because Armand talks about how he became the head of this like down and out cover, the children of darkness. When I heard that word, I was like, boom, my memory got back into it. I was like, that's how they refer to themselves, especially at Omard. And then they go back to Magnus and they, I don't know how accurate this is. Maybe in the next video, I'll verify some things that are that Magnus, the creator of Lestat, was a sire from Armard. So I was like, Whoa. <laughs> Oh, like wow. Oh, wow, 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 and the flashbacks of the style that time. He looks so much more innocent in the sense, or so much, uh, God knows what. He, he looks more innocent, more young, let's say. And on the top of that, what what do you call it? Just me remembering that episode, lo losing off track. That 
when Omar talks about the rules that they lived as the vampires, about not exposing themselves to human, not making vampires as children, aka we're not Claudia, she's gonna burn. It's either she's gonna burn or in episode four, she's gonna get eaten by a rat. There's one of those two things. And we know that's gonna happen. And that's gonna be a sad thing. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. And also the part where I think a little bit unfair. And chronologically, when Award was made, it was described he was made at 16 and have Claudia at 14. So I don't want to say a little bit hypocritical, hey, but maybe they're recognizing the age of maturity at a reasonable time when that age was at 16. So anyway, that's besides the point because poor Claudia, she's very lost and confused. Hey, but anyway, I'm going off topic. So in the flashbacks, Omar tells um, Daniel that Lestat kind of basically threw away all the rules of being a vampire and we see in that point that Lestat is much more weaker and we see a more extent of his powers that he has what was it pyrokinesis, he can create fire, yes, he can fly because of how old he is and he shows that and then we see Nikki, another character from Lestat's early life I personally never read the book The Vampire Lestat I don't know why I never read that. Maybe I don't like to go back in the past when I've seen the current state of a person's life. But anyway, that's off topic. In which Omar basically tells Lestat, look, you're breaking all the rules, this and that. He shows Lestat his power. And Lestat is clearly shaken. But at the same time, Omar takes Nikki, his lover at the time. And Lestat goes into the pit of where all the vampires are with a big, huge ass crucifix. And he shows the other vampires that their beliefs about demons and gods. I, they're all speaking in French and all of this, which makes it sound like, oh, I don't want to say attractive, but it just, you know, adds into the part of the romantic, you know, gothic romantic sense. And he basically shows all the vampires that there's no such thing as devils, god, nothing. We are the gods and stuff. And Stanley interrupts and tells him, you let that happen of Lestat shattering the entire illusion that you had going on and Omar tells Daniel yeah I did because I had those same thoughts for the past let's say uh, you know 500 years or whatever but he says he could they would never believe him if he said that himself so he allowed Lestat to do that and now I'm going to jump forward to a part which I found very interesting. Okay, I'm going to reel now. Talamaska. He sees a file that said something and then the word Talamaska. And when I saw that, I was like, they're pulling the trigger on that. I know the Mayfair Witches, which I really didn't get into the series per se. It got a little bit too like crazy and ruined. I read the book, The Mayfair Witches for God's sake. And I personally, they made her character too goddamn neurotic. For all time. I just couldn't. I just, honest to God, I just couldn't. Now, there, there's so many possibilities with the telemask. David Talbot. I don't. I have a strong sense that David Talbot is gonna come into this series in some kind of form. Because I don't remember the, the series of the Mayfair Witches mentioning David, they mentioned Michael and these other guys from the Talamasca. And of course we know people read the book that Rowan and Lestat do meet in the Blood Cantasol. Like there was a crossover there. But the point is, I believe they, they made the cross-section of the Merrick storyline in which Louis, so in despair over the death of Claudia, finds a witch, a Mayfair witch called Merrick, and she's an agent within the Talamask, the organization of paranormal. Think of it as like the, Vat the Vatican or the CIA or God knows what, the, the Watchers. They also wrote or refer to themselves as the Watchers. Now, I'm not verifying this. I'm, I'm remembering of, you know, like memories back of reading these books to death. And then we have a tale of the body thief in which another, because the people that work in the telemask, some of them already have like paranormal powers, like being psychic, mediums, and like having other abilities. And there's also the quote unquote normal historian guy or whatever. So in the tale of the body thief, Lestat has had like been tired of being a vampire for so long and then he meets a guy that can change the, his souls of another person and this guy goes and tricks Lestat in that and doesn't not tricks he, he said okay you can have my body whatever and they exchange and we have I read that book when I read it I found it 
hilarious at, at the start realizing that he doesn't like being a human so he has to the whole book is him fighting to get back his body to a guy that clearly is in the top of him being having that power he's a thief which is known in a talamasca and Lestat employs the help of David Talbot and at the end David gets the the body or the body fit well he gets the young the young body of the body thief from Lestat and then afterwards against David's against David's will, he becomes a vampire because <laughs> uh, Lestat did form a good relationship with David Talbot in the other books of Memoc the Devil or Memoc. Yeah, that book, oh, I love that book as well. <laughs> and Lestat would always go to David in, in the books to talk with him and each time offer David the dark gift. But David, David before getting in, his soul gets transplanted into the body of a young man says, I'm old, why would I want to be a vampire and old looking? <laughs> Which I agree with 100%. And at the end, David becomes also a vampire. Now, episode four is really on the hook for Claudia's death. The vampire is initiating Claudia into the coven and the big trap that they're gonna do. Because Armard, he may be the leader, but if they revolt against him, there's nothing he can do. And in the episode, we almost think that Armand's going to kill Louis, but at the end of the episode, Armand doesn't kill Louis. Claudia gets initiated, but to her horror, the show that she so much wanted to be a part of, she has to be in the role of a little girl. And she's horrified at that part because of course, she may look 14 even though the actress to me i might put her real age here but who is she kidding that who they picked a real 14 year old girl but anyway that's besides the point and she's trying to move away from that and at the end uh omar finally gets Lou to confess that his maker is lestat and of course, um, he knew all along, but he was waiting for Louis to tell him. And Louis, I first thought that Armand was gonna kill him, but doesn't. And then he, Louis invites Armand into his apartment and we can see what happens next. Oh, wow, I did two episodes in this video and it's still 18 minutes. I went and, you know, glossed over a lot of things because the main important thing is my theory. I really think they're going to do a cross between the both. But then again, they could, change it all around because the big mystery is what do they want from Daniel really? What did they really want from Daniel? They could have said this to any other journalist or whatnot but then again if Daniel maybe because Daniel already knows that Louis is a vampire so they may feel more comfortable talking to him God knows what's the end point but of course the Talamasca is in there because the Talamasca guy says oh, I'm gonna pretend talking on my phone and he tells Daniel the great convergence is real because in season one they talked about Daniel asked Louis, is there any other vampires? And Louis mentions, yeah, there are, there's some giddy, they want to up their numbers. So I don't want this to turn into a war of humans against vampires. I make that to be a sub 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 plot. A subplot. Make that to be the last thing ever. Or make that to be the vehicle for let's start in person time to come in. Anyway, there's so much I explained here. You let me know what's your theories to uh, the, any Anne Rice lovers, do you think they're going to do the cross between Merrick and the tale of the body thief? But then again, we have Queen of the Damned. There's three possibilities they can go go in there because in the Queen of the Damned, that's when the Talamasca gets really, well, for me personally, got really introduced for myself and how Lestat came into it. And then Akasha and her album, then X, Y, and Z. But anyway, 20 minutes, this is the end, a big thank you. And to any new viewers, I really appreciate you can hit the subscribe button. And to any current subscribers, a big thank you. And 